I'd like to do a little explanation, a little clarification of a concept that confuses a lot of people, befuddles a lot of people, <clears throat> even mystifies people, and that is the concept of complex number impedance, or we might just simply say complex impedance. When we talk about resistance in an electrical circuit, it's a single dimensional or a one dimensional quantity. We can plot it along a number line like this. In fact, this is in this little graph here, which is a rendition of figure 15-5 if you have teach yourself electricity and electronics. Here is the name of that book little plug for it. Actually, uh, this is the fifth edition which I uh, am referring to. Figure 15-5 shows a coordinate plane where we plot complex impedance. Resistance going out towards the right on the horizontal axis and reactants going up and down on a vertical axis. What are these little J's? They're called the J operator and J equals the square root of minus one. You've been reading about all this if you have read the book up to this point and you know a little bit about complex and imaginary numbers and it really helps if you do. If you don't a uh, good algebra, first year algebra or pre-calculus course will teach you about that. J is this weird number that is the square root of negative one. There's no real number that'll fulfill that particular criterion, but J, the unit imaginary number, will. We use this J operator and we multiply all of our reactance values by J in order to get the complex impedance of combining reactants and resistance and we can do that on a coordinate plane like that. Well when we do that <clears throat> what we get is a way to plot impedance values as points in a two-dimensional system. Now you might wonder how come this r-axis only goes positively and not negatively? Well, <laughs> there's no such thing as less than no resistance uh, theoretically in electrical circuits. In dynamic situations once in a while you'll hear people talk about negative resistance but in a simple context like this there's no such thing. But reactances can be negative or positive. Positive reactances, x is the real number reactants times j, positive reactances represent inductance, negative reactances represent capacitance. Any point on this axis, vertical axis right here, is a pure reactance. Any point on this horizontal axis here is a pure resistance with no re reactance. But points in the rest of the plane, in the rest of this half plane, this complex impedance half plane shown in figure 15-5, and if you have the fifth edition you'll find that on page 249 as you go through chapter 15. You can plot points on here and you can also draw lines going out from this origin, zero reactance and zero resistance, to some point. And when you do that, you get what is known as a vector, a complex impedance vector. Now, the interesting thing about a complex impedance, let's just look at this for a minute here. If we look at this point at the end of this vector. It looks like about 6 here roughly and maybe a little less than 6 here. Let's just say this is 6.2 and that is 5.8. So we have 6.2 ohms of resistance and 
j times 5.8 positive ohms of reactance. So this is some inductance and some resistance right here. We can plot this as an ordered pair. This this actual point here, we might say it's so what did I say? 6.2 and 5.8. That's an ordered pair of numbers and any point on this coordinate plane of course can be uh, designated as an ordered pair of numbers. We would express this then as 6.2 plus j times 5.8 to get the complex impedance value, the number. That's one way of doing it. But if we plot vectors like this, remember a vector has two independent quantities. It has a magnitude which is the length of the vector going from the origin to the end point and it also has a direction which we can express as an angle going either counterclockwise or maybe in some other case clockwise. Here's another vector looks like about 4.9 minus J7. So that's another uh, another ordered pair. 4.9 and minus 7 on this coordinate plane. When we take the vector here, we have a certain length that we can calculate. We take the vector here, we have a certain length that we can calculate. Those are the magnitudes of the complex impedance vectors. The directions, negative angle going this way, pos pardon me, that's not a negative angle. A positive angle goes counterclockwise, a negative angle goes clockwise. So this looks like about, oh, if you take a guess, oh, 42 degrees. Let's just say that's positive 42 degrees, and this looks like maybe 55 degrees, negative 55 degrees because it goes clockwise from this horizontal resistance axis. We measure the direction going either counterclockwise from the R axis or clockwise and the magnitude going from the origin to the end of the vector. I have not calculated those values here. You need trigonometry and also the uh, Pythagorean theorem from geometry to do that, but I'll, I discuss all that in the book. What I'm just getting at here in this little ditty, this little video here, is the uh, whole concept of complex impedance. And you might ask, well, why do we need to do this? And the, the, the short answer is because if we don't, we never get a complete mathematical picture of what happens when we combine resistances and reactances. In order to get a complete mathematical picture that allows us to work quantitatively with these, um, these entities, these resistances and reactances combined, these impedances, we need two dimensions. One dimension just isn't enough. One dimension is enough for pure resistance. Like, for example, what you'd get from an industrial resistor, carbon composition resistor. Reactances, just pure reactances, like a, an inductor, a coil, or a capacitor all by itself, we, we can do that on one dimension like this number line goes here. But if we combine them together, resistance and reactance, we need two dimensions and the J operator, J being the square root of minus one, makes it mathematically all work out really nicely. It's a little bit messy when you're dealing with signs, pluses and minuses and multiplying negative square roots by each other and quantities like that. It gets a little bit 
messy in terms of the arithmetic, but it's not rocket science. It's not anything so esoteric. You know, it's not general relativity or anything like that. It's a lot, uh, a lot simpler on uh, in the fundamental. It does get messy. That's the only thing about it, and it, that can be a little bit annoying. <clears throat> and you know, it can also, it means that you, when you make calculations with these quantities, you're, you're, it's a good idea to do it twice, maybe even three times. Check your work. Because when you're fooling around with signs, a minus times a minus times a plus times a minus divided by a minus and all of that, it can get a little bit confusing and it's pretty easy to get them switched. And if you do that, you're out of luck. So that's why we do this. We need to have two dimensions. Impedance is a two dimensional entity, a two-dimensional beast. So once you've understood that and you're in chapter 15, you can keep going, have fun with this book. If it gets to be a drag, quit. Life is too short not to have fun. Stan Gibalisco, signing off.